Dear members of the State Commission, ladies and gentlemen, today we are holding a traditional meeting of the State Commission to confirm the assignment of the permanent backup crew of Soyuz TMA 06M. As you all know, the Chief Designer Commission, the State Commission, and our colleagues from the Federal Space Agency have approved the final preparation of the spacecraft and the launch on October 23rd with the international crew. And yesterday was the first work day of the State Commission, and the rocket test was successful. So we are ready for the launch. And the most important part is left here is to confirm the assignment of the prime crew. I'm very sure that both crews are ready to perform those tasks that have been assigned to them. And I'd like to give the floor to Sergei Krikalov. Dear members of the State Commission, in order to perform the Expedition 33-34 Long Duration Program, we have the following crew members that have completed training. Prime crew consisting of Oleg Novitsky, Soyuz Commander, Station Flight Engineer, Yevgeny Tarelkin, Soyuz Flight Engineer, Station Flight Engineer and Kevin Ford, FE-2 for Soyuz, uh, FE for ISS-33 and Commander for ISS-34. Backup crew consisting of Pavel Vinogradov, Commander for the Soyuz and Station Flight Engineer, Alexander Mesurkin, Soyuz Flight Engineer, Station Flight Engineer, and Christopher Cassidy, FE-2 for Soyuz and Station Flight Engineer. All crew members have passed their qualification examinations, successfully completed their integrated simulations, and according to the Chief Medical Board conclusion, all crew members are deemed to be ready for the mission. Upon the completion of training at GCTC, the Inter-Agency Commission of the Crew Readiness have reviewed the results of their training and came to a conclusion that all crew members completed all required training to be ready for the mission on Soyuz and for the ISS in total. The preparation program has been completed in full, and we propose that the State Commission confirm the assignment of the prime crew for Soyuz TMA 06 M, commander of the vehicle Oleg Novitsky, flight engineers Evgeny Terelkin and Kevin Ford, and the backup crew consisting of Pavel Vinogradov, Commander for Soyuz, Alexander Misurkin, Soyuz Flight Engineer, and Soyuz Flight Engineer, Christopher Cassidy. This completes my report. So let us confirm the assignment of the crews of Soyuz TMA-06M, Commander Oleg Novitsky, Flight Engineer, Evgeny Tarelkin and Kevin Ford, flight engineer, and the backup crew consisting of Pavel Vinogradov, commander for Soyuz, flight engineer Alexander Mesurkin, and flight engineer Christopher Cassidy. And the second item of the agenda is to continue all preparatory work of the launch facilities and to launch. I don't think we could have taken any other decisions. First of all, I would like to congratulate the prime crew. We had absolutely no doubts about the decision we were going to take. And we are absolutely sure that you will accomplish all the objectives for this mission. Right now, I'd like to give the floor to Michael Server, Director of Manned Flight Operations at NASA. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Oleg, Evgeny, and Kevin. You have completed your training and are well prepared. The NASA ground systems are ready. The Orn Orbit U.S. segment is ready for your arrival. 
and we wish you a safe trip. Наземные системы НАСА готовы, американский сегмент готов к вашему прибытию, и мы желаем вам безопасного полета. Спасибо. Мы приступаем к ответным словам по традиции. And according to the tradition, we give the floor to the crew. We are fully ready to complete the tasks both on the Soyuz and the station. Thank you, and let's do it. I just would like to thank everybody at Tsepeka for the wonderful preparation and support. Energia, thank you for the outstanding vehicle and sharing the uh, fit checks. And uh, to everyone here in Baikonur, thanks for being a fantastic host. Thank you very much. Thank you. Once again, on behalf of the State Commission and everyone present here to congratulate, I would like to congratulate the Prime Crew. We have no doubt that you will accomplish all the objectives for the mission. I would like to join everyone and wish you good luck. And I also wish you a successful completion of your mission. And we are waiting for you here, back on Earth, safe and sound. Thank you very much. Dear friends, let us start our press conference in accordance with the flight program of the ISS. Soyuz TMA-06M spacecraft will launch on October 23rd, 4.51 p.m. local time. The State Commission has confirmed the assignment of the prime and backup crews. Oleg Novitsky, Commander Roscosmos Russia, FE for Soyuz and the ISS Evgeny Terelkin, Roscosmos Russia. FE for the Soyuz, FE for ISS 33, Commander of ISS 34, Kevin Ford, NASA USA. And the backup crew consisting of Soyuz Commander FE for the station Pavel Vinogradov, Russia. Alexander Misurkin FE for both the Soyuz and the ISS. Christopher Cassidy, Soyuz and station flight engineer NASA, United States. So let us ask questions to the prime and backup crew. Uh, good, good morning and uh, let, uh, let us uh, start our press conference devoted to the uh, uh, future launch uh, tomorrow, 23rd of October, uh, for uh, o'clock 51 minute uh, local time. Um, and uh, we are ready to start our press conference. We are welcome to ask the questions. Good morning. Elena Zubtsova, the Industrial Korea. I have a question for the Prime Crew. All three of us will fly on Soyuz for the first time. Less than one day is left till the launch. What kind of feelings do you have right now? We already met in the Star City, so it's our second time when we meet each other. So maybe you could share your thoughts and feelings, hopes, passions with us. Thank you for the question. Probably I will start answering this question. I don't have any specific feelings, but I have a feeling of expectation, hopefully, and we are absolutely confident in our specialists, in our vehicle, and I think that our equipment is absolutely fault-proof. Of course, we have feelings. The lunch time is approaching, but seriously speaking, we are absolutely confident in our vehicle. We have studied the vehicle very well. We're absolutely calm and we are ready well, and to launch. Of course, for me, this is a very new adventure, uh, launching from Russia and launching aboard the Soyuz. Uh, the Soyuz is, uh, is an amazing aircraft, uh, spacecraft. And, uh, the time I've spent in the simulators with uh, Oleg and Yevgeny, uh, I can see how, how ready they are, how well they know uh, the, the uh, spacecraft, and our flight will be very much just like all the training we've done in Star City, and it's, uh, it's going to be a wonderful experience to see them in orbit for the first time. 
Конечно, очень волнительно предстоящий, совершить предстоящий полет, но я настолько уверен в своем экипаже. Мы столько времени провели вместе, тренируясь в Звездном городке. И экипаж очень опытный, и это будет наш первый полет вместе. И я очень жду этого полета, жду вместе, совместной работы на борту космической станции и полета на корабле «Союз». Thank you very much. I would also like to know that all crew members are smiling after the decision of the State Commission. Next question, please. Uh, hello, my question for um, Ford, Kevin Ford. Uh, my name is Diane. Sorry, we cannot hear you well. Не слышно. Можно немножко громче. Okay, вот так. And now, better? Uh, just a little bit. Okay. I tried to, to speak more loud. Uh, so my name is Daria. I'm a tea producer, uh, Russian channel. Uh, so my question for Kevin Ford. Uh, um, you were in the um, International Space Station. So uh, what is the difference between emotions and enthusiasm uh, this uh, time and the first one? Вопрос Кевину Форду. А, каковы его ощущ ощущения? Он уже был на космической станции, летал на шатле. И каковы ваша эмоциональная разница между ожиданием полета на шатле и ожиданием полета на корабле Союз? Well, the uh, first flight I was uh, on board space station only for about 10 days total, and my duties were really more related to the to the, spa the space shuttle, flying the space shuttle uh, there and back again. And so I, I really knew very little about the machine, the space station itself, other than how to stay safe in it and, uh, and perform the tasks I was asked to. Uh, but this time, now I understand the space station very well, both the American segment and the U.S. segment, as well as our partners, uh, the Columbus, the Kibo module, and so forth. So I'm really looking forward to working aboard this time for the long term. And uh, it'll be uh, a very different pace of flight, and I'll enjoy, I'll enjoy it very much. Мой первый полет я совершил на шатле. Я все, всего провел 10 дней на космической станции. Собственно, мой полет был связан с задачами, возложенными на миссию корабля «Шаттл». И особенно не углублялся в изучение космической станции. Сейчас я готовился по программе полета длительной экспедиции на космическую станцию. И я изучил все модули, и даже европейский «Коламбус», и «Кибо», и очень хорошо изучил космическую станцию, очень жду провести много времени, совершить этот длительный, первый свой длительный полет на космическую станцию. Совершенно другая задача, совершенно будет другая работа. Спасибо большое. Thank you very much. Наталья Бурцева, Роскосмос ТВ Студио. I have a question for the Prime Crew. And I would also like to ask Alexander Misurkin to answer this question because it's his first time at Baikonur. I know that crew, crews have different traditions at Baikonur. We have heard a lot about them, but we would like to hear from the prime crew what traditions they're following. And I would like to ask Kevin Ford which traditions, Baikonur traditions, he likes best. Хороший вопрос. That is a good question. Since we are living in a different hotel right now, but we could have a place for change. Yes, but we are living in a different hotel right now, but we could have a place for change. Yes, but we are living in a different hotel right now, but we could have a place for change. Yes, but we are living in a different hotel right now, but we could have a place for change. Yes, but we are living in a different Previous crews used to live in this hotel. That's why we want to keep this tradition, and we asked that uh, asked about that, and Roscosmos allowed it to us. We are living in a new hotel, which is more comfortable to us. However, only because we want to keep this tradition, we will make our first step from this hotel tomorrow. There is also one more tradition. There is a correspondent, Natalia Burtseva, who always asks the same question. What kind of traditions you follow at Baikonur? So I think it's also a tradition. But seriously speaking, we have lots of traditions at Baikonur. We try to keep all of them our profession is hazardous sometimes, 
and all those minor things as to from which uh, food to start the day, left or right, we always keep that. Natalia, that's a great question. The most memorable tradition for me was the last night when the backup crew was busy painting the rocket of the prime crew. Thank you very much for those who helped us. We tried to do our best. I think that the result is really promising. So tomorrow we will see the rockets all together and hope the prime crew will like it. As you have noticed, everybody is in a great mood, both the prime crew and the backup crew. However, it was a joke from Alexander Masurkin. Kevin, could you please expand well, uh, more about the, the Baikonur yeah, traditions? Obviously, traditions down here, they're almost all new to me. But uh, over the course of 14 days, uh, we have the opportunity, of course, the, the tree planting is a, is a fantastic and very touching tradition. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we also have opportunity for sports events together. And uh, we, all, we all eat together as a crew and get to know each other very well also for the last two weeks. So I think that's really nice. And of course, uh, a very famous tradition uh, worldwide is uh, the viewing of the movie, which we'll do after this press conference, Velia Sonsa Pustini. So I'm looking forward to that well, as well. Есть очень много традиций, которые для меня новые. Мне очень понравилось очень трогательное такое событие, традиция посадка деревьев. Мне это очень понравилось. Мы здесь, как экипаж, провели 14 дней в очень тесном обществе общения друг с другом. Мы кушали вместе, жили очень рядом друг с другом, общались очень много. Это тоже, это тоже традиция. И сегодня, после того, как закончится пресс-конференция, у нас будет совместная на просмотр фильма «Белое солнце пустыни», который я очень жду с нетерпением. Это тоже, тоже великая традиция. Спасибо большое, экипажа. Thank you very much. Next question, please. Алтна Ибраева, Космический центр Южный. Олег, скажите, у вас... Южный Space Center. Олег, you already know the flight program. What are you going to do in addition to that flight program? Спасибо за вопрос. Thank you very much for the question. Of course, if we have spare time, we will try to take more pictures, videos. If we have more time, probably we will post these pictures and videos to some blog to let all people see the earth from above, both adults and children. But this is what you will do in your spare time. But what experiments will you be performing during the mission? Will you have any joint experiments on both segments? For the flight program, the Russian crew will have to perform approximately 50 experiments, including medical ones, industrial education experiments, and we will be performing the experiments throughout the whole mission. Uh, regarding joint experiments, we have a fish transfer experiment that I hope will be performed successfully. So that is a biological experiment, right? Well, we will ask our partners why they need that much fish. And I would like Kevin to answer this question as well. I think I understood. Thank, thank you. Well, uh, one of the things, uh, if you're speaking about like us working together, is that uh, in, in less than a month from now, the uh, current crew of Expedition 33 will be gone, and we'll spend about five or six weeks uh, together just as a three-person crew. And at that point, we'll really, really have to help each other out in both segments. Uh, I'll be back to the Russian segment uh, a lot, maybe for uh, photographic support. And they're going to need to help me a lot uh, because I'll be, I'll be solo up front. Что касается нашей такой крупной, крупного плана работы, то мы прилетим на станцию и меньше, чем через месяц три члена экипажа, которые уже сейчас находятся на станции, вернутся на землю. И мы проведем около 5-6 недель одни втроем на станции в ожидании следующей экспедиции, которая к нам присоединится позже. И в это время мы будем плотно вместе работать, и нам придется много поддерживать друг друга, друг другу. Там, я, может быть, ребятам на России 
российском сегменте буду помогать там, в фотографировании, они, может быть, мне будут помогать в каких-то экспериментах. Мы будем помогать друг другу очень много. So, and then, uh, just want to mention, for the long term, of course, we'll continue the, the fantastic experiments we have on, say, combustion, fluid dynamics, and uh, space medical uh, issues. But right when we get aboard, uh, between uh, now, the 22nd of October and the 1st of November, uh, we have our launch, our docking, the release of SpaceX Dragon, a progress coming aboard, and a U.S. spacewalk all in the course of just over the next, uh, just over the next week. So we really face a lot of tasks that we'll concentrate on right off the bat uh, when we get aboard. Что касается такого крупного плана работы АТАК, вот мы прилетим на станцию, у нас сразу начнется очень плотный график. Мы стартуем, через два дня мы стыкуемся, потом через несколько дней у нас прилетит прогресс, надо будет его разгружать, стыковка с прогрессом. Потом еще через пару дней американский корабль «Дракон» отстыкуется. И все это буквально за 10 дней такой плотной работы, стыковки, расстыковки. Спасибо большое. Thank you very much. As a follow-up to the question about the flight program, I have a question for Pavel Vinogradov. Today, Vladimir Popovkin, head of Roscosmos, said that he will have a very special mission, a new scheme of for the men vehicle. How are you going to prepare for that train, for that? According to our tradition, I will knock on the wood. I don't want to talk about the future very much. We cosmonauts do not talk much about the future. But to put it short, we're planning to follow a so-called fast scheme of docking of the vehicle. That means that it will take only four orbits for the vehicle to dock to the station. However, it is nothing new. If you remember the first crews who were flying to the space starting from 19. 69. The first crews were following this path. However, the technological level right now is much higher. We have a digital control system. The vehicle has been upgraded. The vehicle is really smart. It's really flexible. And of course, all of this will mean more work for the mission control center. And of course, it's more comfortable for the crew to dock faster. I can compare it with the flight from Moscow to Houston. We can do it in 12 hours or we can do it in three hours. Of course, there is a huge difference. Of course, we will do everything possible to make this happen. However, it's not only our work, it's also work of a lot of other companies, including Cosmodrome, including RC Nurge. We will try to do our best and we will see what we'll have in the end. We'll see that on March 28th, next year. That's what I wanted to say about it. Rob Nabius, NASA Television. Two questions for Kevin. Uh, you mentioned a moment ago the volume of activity that awaits you and your crewmates in that first week on orbit. Arguably the busiest first week for any expedition in history, perhaps. How daunting is that challenge, and is this indicative of the way life is going to be on the station from now on? And I have a follow-up. Well, uh, I don't think it's indicative of uh, hopefully every week aboard. Uh, otherwise, we won't uh, we won't last long. But um, the uh, the tasks just kind of fall into a place where they need to be. We need to take care of our our problem uh, outside. So that's why we'll have to get the spacewalk in. And uh, of course, the dragon's aboard and needs, needs to come home on time as well. Uh, my organization back home has done a lot to prepare me for it. Uh, one of the things they did was sent Joe Acaba back to Star City a little early to give me a really good handover brief, which uh, doesn't usually happen, but we were able to take advantage of that this time. Uh, 
Еще будет еще один вопрос. Первый вопрос о том, что он упомянул, что первая неделя будет достаточно плотной работы, стыковки, расстыковки и также выход в открытый космос. И как это будет выматывающе, и еще надо будет сделать пересменку, успеть с экипажем. Ну, а Кевин ответил, что... Да, будет плотная работа, но работаем-то по плану, все должно выполняться, дракон должен отстыковаться, прогресс должен пристыковаться, и выход в открытый космос, он тоже необходимо его сделать, поэтому никаких переносов не будет, и мы справимся, мы, мы тренировались, мы готовились, мы все сделаем. So and to finish the thought, Rob, I think, you know, after, after the spacewalk comes down and we get that taken care of, uh, hopefully we'll have a little time to catch our breath and get some good handover activities with uh, Sunny, Yuri, and Aki uh, before they depart. And then when we're a three-person crew, I expect to be able to, to catch a breather. Да, еще во время его пребывания в звездном городке до приезда сюда, он встретился с Жуакабо, он ему передал практически много информации. То есть у него такая же пересменка, ну, частично состоялась. Жуакабо очень много рассказал. И сейчас, когда они прилетят, выполнят, в, в, Кевин выполнит выход в открытый космос. И я надеюсь, будет время, чтобы спокойно обсудить и сделать пересменку с Малинченко, с Анитой Уильямс и Акихико. And as a follow-up, Kevin, um, one week after your arrival, the space station will mark the uh, 12th anniversary of the start of the hum permanent human presence in space with the arrival of Expedition 1. Why is that significant, and how impressive is the technical feat of the space station to have enabled that to have occurred? Well, uh, I, of course, uh, being inside the program, probably appreciate more of the technical challenges of maintaining that presence up there, keeping the uh, environmental control systems running and uh, maintaining a workable space station at the same time that you're trying to push and get all this science done, which the space station was built for. Через неделю после вашего прилета на космической станции отметят 12-летие пребывания, постоянного пребывания людей на борту. Чем, как можно подвести такой итог пользы космической станции? Ответ Кевина в том, что люди, находясь на космической станции, они помогают техническую поддержку работы космической станции. Для того, чтобы все эксперименты, научные эксперименты, медицинские, имели место быть, и чтобы все продолжалось то есть для будущего работы космической станции. So, and I, just to finish out, I think we're, we're turning the corner now. Um, the first, you know, 10 years really uh, very intensive in the construction side of it, getting all the pieces together and really getting the science enabled. And uh, now this next decade will be the utilization phase. So I think we'll look at the first decade as the, the decade of learning how to build a space station and operate one, and the second decade as uh, the, the area of utilization, if you will, to, uh, to use it. I think we're going to learn the bulk of everything we know about the science we're doing up there in this next decade. Ну, первая декада в жизни космической станции — это фактически ее построение. За первую декаду это вот действительно было, новые модули присоединялись, пристыковывались. Это постройка, постройка вот всей космической станции была. Заняты были построением космической станции для того, чтобы можно было на ней проводить эксперименты. И вот сейчас уже пошла декада свободной работы на уже готовой космической станции. Теперь мы можем ее использовать такую, какая она есть. Thank you very much. Next question, please. Hello, Russia Today. Russia Today Television. I would like to go back to the first question at this press conference about your feelings, impressions. I understand that you're sure about the spacecraft, your crew members, but Alec and Evgeny, it will be your first time in space. So I'm wondering, do you have any feelings about that? What do you think about it? Are you nervous? 
Of course, we are very scared, but the State Commission said it today that we have no way back. But seriously speaking, it's an absolutely new sensation because we are all pilots and it was a little bit different. Right now, we will need to fly into outer space and I think it will be an unforgettable feeling. You will see the earth from such a distance and it's it's a really scary feeling i've already mentioned it but i will say it once again i'm thinking about lunch right now but seriously speaking i can say that every normal person will be nervous before such a lunch but i think that you know what a difference is between a brave person and a coward a coward is scared and he will never do anything. But a brave person can be nervous, can have other difficult feelings, but he will do what he wants to do. That is why we have no problems at all. We're looking forward to the flight. I can say that out of six crew members, only Pavel Vinogradov is an experienced crew member. So you can ask this question to almost everyone sitting here. Next question, please. Stephen Lee with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science in Colorado. I'd like to address a question to each of tomorrow's crew members and any of the, the backup crew that would care to answer it. I expect most school children in the world would like to be where you are today, especially tomorrow. Uh, what inspired you when you were a, a child to follow the path that you have, and what advice would you have for all the 12-year-olds out there that would like to be uh, cosmonauts and astronauts when they grow up? Вопрос экипажу. Сейчас многие школьники смотрят на вас с вожделением и восхищением и даже некоторой завистью. Многие из них хотели бы оказаться сегодня на вашем месте, а особенно завтра хотели бы оказаться на вашем месте. Что вас вдохновило, когда вы были детьми, стать космонавтом? Okay, well, thank, uh, thanks. It's great to have you over here, and uh, it's a great question. When I, was, uh, I, when I was young, I think, I thought everybody would want to be an astronaut. It was uh, just, just one of those things we all dreamed of and we saw on TV. And uh, I occasionally, as a, as a young boy, would, uh, I had a small closet in my bedroom and I would take a chair in there and tip it over on its back and pretend like it was a seat looking skyward and I would bring my parents' vacuum cleaner in with me and use it as an engine to turn it off. And imagine I was in a really tight space and flying to space. And tomorrow, uh, when I climb in uh, to the Soyuz, I'll imagine I'm in my closet, and it'll make it a little bit more comfortable. Когда я был маленьким, ну, не совсем маленьким, но ребенком, я любил залезать в шкаф и как бы притворяться, что, что он находится в космическом, таком, в тесном космическом корабле. А еще я люблю брать у мамы пылесос и затаскивать туда его, включать, как будто вот он жужжит, реальный двигатель, там все, все работает. Очень любил смотреть на небо, наблюдать за звездами. Всегда, всегда мечтал полететь в космос. Спасибо. And then, uh, when I got a little bit older, I had an older brother who was a pilot, and he took me flying. And so my career really took off uh, toward this business uh, when I went into flying, and I became an Air Force pilot, and then kind of worked my way in, into engineering, and then into test flying, and then finally uh, was in a position to fly to be an astronaut, and kind of been able to, it's very lucky to be able to realize this dream, of course. И когда я стал немного постарше, мой брат, старший брат, стал летчиком. И э, я, ну, он брал меня с собой, мы, мы с ним летали. И э, потом я стал летчиком, потом я стал, э, изучил э, часть инженерную, и я стал летчиком-испытателем. Все это постепенно привело меня к исполнению моей мечты. И сейчас я очень рад, что моя мечта действительно сбылась, и я стал астронавтом. Ну, наверное... Я скажу пару слов. 
I would like to add a couple of words. In my childhood, I did not have a vacuum cleaner and we didn't have big closets. That's why I never dreamt of becoming a cosmonaut. Unfortunately, uh, when I was a kid, I didn't have a vacuum cleaner and I didn't have that tiny closet. So I did not dream uh, to become a cosmonaut. That was the reason. Все свое сознательное детство я мечтал стать военным. И, в общем-то, стал. Единственная вот эта кривая жизни, она меня, видимо, выводила к тому, что я все-таки стану космонавтом, потому что учился я в школе имени Юрия Алексеевича Гагарина, закончил ее, потом военно-воздушной академии имени Юрия Алексеевича Гагарина. И так жизнь как-то так меня вывела все-таки к этому, к центру подготовки, да. Вот. Но потом, естественно, у нас появился пылесос, so, but uh, actually, uh, to speak in seriously, uh, the life curve actually turned me to to my uh, to what I am now. I um, went to school named by Yuri Gagarin. I went to uh, the high school named by Yuri Gagarin, and. And and I I I uh, actually um, uh, worked at GCTC, which is uh, Gagarin Cosmo Training Center. So everything was connected with Gagarin's name. And uh, now, of course, uh, later on, I got I I really bought the vacuum cleaner, and my dream came true. <laughs> Evgeny, I would like to ask you, maybe your father was an example for you. Can you, can you tell a few words about your father? Конечно, я из семьи военного. Сейчас родители моей супруга здесь находятся. Естественно, примером для выбора у таких героических профессий был мой отец. Он и сейчас есть, и всегда будет. Игорь Евгеньевич Тарелкин. И, естественно, главное, мой папа, полковник ВВС, герой России, испытатель катапульных установок и парашютных систем, испытывал очень многие парашютные системы, поэтому у меня всегда было на что равняться. Также моя мама всегда способствовала всем вот этим вот экстремальным вещам, потому что когда-то я там, грубо говоря, в 12 лет решил выполнить свой первый парашютный прыжок. Естественно, у меня ни веса, ни ума, ничего не хватало, но родители так вот, ну, ну что делать? Вот бык упрямый, ну вот он хочет и все. Поэтому вот как-то так вышло, что помогали они мне очень сильно в этом. Поэтому и помогают, и сейчас я вижу одна только помощь. Плюс, естественно, наши супруги Наверное, если бы наши жены нас не поддерживали, и мы бы до этого не дошли, потому что довольно это все тоже тяжело для них. Тяжело вот это вот время подготовки в отряде, потому что, в общем-то, мы вроде как зомби. Мы домой-то мы иногда приходим, но толку от нас там, по сути дела... Не, ну не, вы не подумайте, толк-то есть. И, да, двой, да. В смысле в помощи там уже и гвоздь забить там. Вот, то есть так, в состоянии такого анабиоза, так гвоздь, раз, а сам думаешь, как же там, ага, акселерометр, там, вот это же вот так, ну, то есть смысл в этом. Of course, my father was an example, a good example for me, and uh, uh, actually the example of my father made uh, my choice uh, come true to become a military man. And my father is a military man, and he is a colonel, a colonel of... Uh, uh, Air, uh, Air Force of Russia, and he's a hero of Russia, and he did uh, his um, heroic uh, ejection seat testing and uh, the parachute system testing. And of course, being a child, I, I, went, I looked up at my father, and I was uh, very much loved what he was doing. And when I was 12, I didn't have neither um, good uh, brains, neither... Uh, weight, but I did want to to do my first jump with a parachute, and um, um, luckily, <laughs> so they 
my parents were afraid of that, but they could do nothing about me crazy. So, so I was really crazy about parachute jumping, and I, my father and my mother were great support. And now uh, our spouses, uh, my spouse is a great support to me. Our families all are a great support to us, and um, um, that's that's a good thing to to have. Что касается меня, я, конечно, хочу поддержать тему, начатую Кевином. У нас был пылесос, был шкаф, но я боялся темноты. I want to continue Kevin's idea about the um, vacuum cleaner. So I, when I was a kid, I did have a vacuum cleaner. I did have a closet, but I was uh, scared of the darkness. И чтобы привыкнуть к темноте, мне очень нравилось смотреть звезды на небо. Наверное, тогда в этот момент появилось какое-то желание или мечта вот эта детская попасть туда, узнать, что находится там, вот среди этих мерцающих звезд. And uh, to get a little bit used to darkness, I looked up to the stars. I was uh, um, very much adored uh, looking uh, at the star, starry night, and uh, that inspired me very much. И чтобы, наверное, приблизить свою мечту, Поскольку я не знал, где находятся космонавты, как их обучают, где они готовятся, поступил в летное училище Борисоглевское, в котором обучался мой двоюродный брат. После этого, в связи с сокращением военно-воздушных сил, был переведен в Ейское училище, в котором учился и я, Евгений, Максим, который уже слетал, а сейчас оказывает нам поддержку вот на процессе всей подготовки. И только после этого появилась возможность по окончании академии имени Юрия Алексеевича Гагарина, опять же, выполнить отбор, пройти, вернее, отбор в отряд космонавтов, и что, соответственно, с успехом получилось, поскольку мы сейчас находимся здесь. Вот вкратце такой вот небольшой путь. While I was looking up uh, into the starry sky, I was um, thinking of how do the cosmos get there. And uh, when I get uh, older, I entered the uh, um, pilot school, so I decided to be a pilot to get to know how to become a cosmonaut. Then I um, um, actually uh, entered the uh, Borisoglebsk pilot school, and uh, when it was, um, there were some changes in the air forces, and I was uh, moved to uh, Yeysk uh, pilot school, where my, me, myself, uh, Evgeny Tarelkin, and Maxim Suraev um, finished the same school. Maxim Suraev is a um, cosmonaut and a hero of Russia. He's uh, now been a great support uh, in Baikonur. Um, he's actually official crew support here. Uh, And then I entered and uh, finished the academy named by Yuri Gagarin, and uh, my my dream were, was closer and closer. And then I did all my best to enter the uh, um, the cosmonaut uh, quarters. Спасибо. Peter Leonard, Associated Press. A uh, question for Kevin. Um, I want to ask you about the. Uh, about the increasing importance of uh, commercial craft to uh, traveling to the space station. We know that it's kind of taking on increasing importance. I was wondering if you could just speak briefly uh, about uh, the role that they play and can play and what technical upgrades you would like to see to existing commercial craft that you think could make them an even more uh, useful asset in the future. Okay, uh, thanks. That's a great question. Uh, clearly, uh, we have a dragon aboard right now, SpaceX. Um, the, the program is proving to be a great idea, and uh, we're looking forward to the uh, orbital Cygnus flying up again early uh, next year as well and joining this, uh, this capability to deliver uh, cargo on board. Uh, the sustainability for the space station is, is a very, very difficult thing. Certain things need to get up. And then, of course, uh, we need to get important science down as well. So the ability to get some, um, some materials down uh, through the Dragon is going to prove to be very, very beneficial to us. Вопрос был про коммерческие космические корабли, которые сейчас начинают свою работу. И Кевин сказал, что у нас сейчас коммерческий корабль Дракон, 
который завершит свой пробный полет. И, надеюсь, в следующем году у нас будет уже реальный полет дракона в качестве грузового корабля, который доставит на станцию уже грузы. И поскольку это возвращаемый корабль, то и для станции это очень важно, как доставлять грузы на станцию, так и возвращать их на землю, поскольку это большая проблема сейчас. И дракон, ее, возможно, мы надеемся, что он решит эту проблему. So their performance here is very important to the sustainability of the space station uh, through this next decade. So that'll, that'll be a great benefit of the new commercial program. But also the fact that these companies out there are themselves learning a lot about getting to and from low Earth orbit and picking up that task so that NASA can indeed begin to concentrate on things out of low Earth orbit and going uh, further out into our solar system and doing new kinds of exploration. So I think it's just got great benefits all the way around. И э, коммерческие полеты на низкие орбиты э, программа SpaceX э, тоже э, имеет большое будущее, но коммерческие э, люди, которые занимаются коммерческими полетами на, на, в космос, они очень обеспокоены э, будущим и э, прогрессом э, таких полетов. Спасибо. И снова. Thank you. I have a question for Pavel Vinogradov. You are the most experienced crew member here. Could you say something to the first flyers? What would you wish to them? Maybe eat more, sleep more, eat less, wake up earlier, look at the Earth more frequently. So what would you wish to them in their first mission. First of all, I would like to wish them not to encounter those interesting things that will definitely become part of their life for the next couple of months. But I would like to wish them a good return to Earth, and I would like to still be their friend and for them to still be my friends. So I would like to keep those good, friendly relationships that we have right now. We had different situations in the past, but I would like to wish you to remain the same great people you are right now. That's the most important. Thank you very much. That's a great wish. We are about to complete the press conference, so quick questions, quick answers. Ria Novosti, news agency. I have a question for the prime crew. My first question is for Alec. Navitsky and Evgeny Tarelkin. During your mission, no EVAs are scheduled on the Russian segment. Are you disappointed about it? Or have you been trained for that? Well, our general opinion is that we're disappointed. However, uh, the flight program does not schedule any EVAs. And two short questions. Your crew will celebrate New Year's on board the station. Have you already prepared some New Year gifts for each other? And how are you going to celebrate the New Year? And the second question, what, your, what did your families wish to you? Of course, we are taking some presents with us because we are going to have birthdays, New Year celebrations. Of course, we are not going to disclose what kind of presents we have prepared. We are also taking Snegurichka. That's a Russian uh, granddaughter of Russian Santa Claus. And we will be Santa Clauses on board the station. Kevin? Ah, 
Um, well, maybe you already know that uh, we had big plans for Christmas Day. That was one of our two holidays for our expedition. We had two official holidays, and uh, Christmas Day, the 25th of December, has already been canceled because we'll have a uh, Soyuz arriving aboard with our crewmates, uh, Roman Romanenko, Chris Hadfield, and Tom Marshburn on that day. На самом деле у нас два официальных праздника, да, Рождество и Новый год, и праздник Рождество уже отменили, потому что в этот день у нас будет стыковка с экипажем Романенко, Хэтфилд и Машбер на борту. But uh, to us, uh, perhaps when they arrive aboard, it'll be like uh, Santa Claus arriving and, and bringing us uh, gifts from Earth, and we'll find other times to celebrate. Uh, certainly, we'll celebrate Evgeny's birthday and uh, the new year aboard and uh, take some time to, to call home and celebrate with our families, even though we're in Earth orbit. Ну, мы будем это воспринимать как подарком Санта-Клауса, который нам прислал такой подарок в качестве нового экипажа друзей наших, присоединившихся к нам на Рождество. А также мы потом отметим день рождения Жени и Новый год. И я надеюсь, мы позвоним своим семьям, поговорим с ними и так, таким образом отметим. Спасибо. Действительно, космический экипаж День Thank you. Олега был здесь 12 октября. Отмечали на Actually, we were celebrating Oleg's birthday on October 12th. А, еще про семьи скажи, пожалуйста, вот Олег. Uh, could you please add a couple of words about your family's Oleg? Насчет пожеланий семьи, я думаю, выражу также общее мнение, что все они... Well, I will express the general opinion that our families wish us a successful launch, fruitful work, and safe return back to Earth. I know that they are worrying about us a lot, and we would like to thank our parents, spouses, friends, brothers, all those who are supporting us right now. And the final question, please. Russian Today Television, I have a question for Oleg and Yevgeny. You are both military men, and I know that Oleg was participating in real military operations. So the ISS is a good example how all people from different backgrounds, international crews, can coexist with each other. So what do you think about it? I think you have answered your question yourself. Of course, the ISS is an international project that unites people, unites cultures, and all of us are performing common joint objectives. One state cannot afford such a project on its own, and of course, we are all uh, serving this one goal. America company. I'd like to know as you anticipate having some time for yourself on occasion, is there something you look forward to doing when you have those moments? Есть ли что-нибудь у вас, чего вы ждете с наибольшим нетерпением сделать на станции? Экипажу? Вопрос экипажу. То есть то, что мы больше всего хотим сделать. А, в свободное, в свободное время. время. А, ну, вопрос, хороший вопрос, его уже задавали, по-моему. Естественно, как если сейчас мы прилетим, у нас навряд ли будет какое-то свободное время, потому что надо, во-первых, войти в курс дела, то есть, как говорится. То есть у нас, я так думаю, что не будет практически этого свободного времени. Естественно, дальше, наверное, оно появится, и, скорее всего, это свободное время будет отведено, ну, я не знаю, общению с семьями есть такая возможность. Опять же, Олег правильно говорил, фотографирование. Так просто пообщаться друг с другом, потому что на самом деле работа на станции – это действительно тяжелая работа, и просто может даже иногда, как наши старшие друзья говорят, иногда друг друга не видят там сутками, потому что есть какие-то задачи и выполняешь. Вот. Ну, кратко, наверное, так вот. Ну, я думаю, Евгений, ты за всех ответил, да? Так. Ну, Евгений, я думаю, ты ответил. Мы ждем перевода для всех. So Eugene said that uh, actually uh, during the first uh, weeks we were, were not going to have very uh, much free time. But once we get it, once we have more free time, I guess we are going to talk to our families. We have such an opportunity. And uh, we also going to do a lot of photographing, like Oleg said already. 
And um, uh, we are going to spend more time with each other, chatting, chattering, just uh, speaking to each other. Because uh, some, uh, some of our friends uh, coming back from space say that they have so much work to do that they don't even have a minute to talk to each other. And they sometimes don't see each other throughout the day. Evgeny, I know that the lunch time is closing, but I want to ask the Evgeny, final sorry, question. I know you're too hungry, you want to have your lunch very soon. Everyone knows that there is a certain degree of tension. No, 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 we will not ask this question. No, 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 I want to ask it. Since uh, the military bases are expanding throughout Europe. However, we see a very friendly cooperation and relationships between cosmonauts and astronauts. So talking and addressing our politicians, what would you say to them? Yeah, that's what we want to answer. Let's be friends. That's a quotation from a Russian cartoon. Maybe our presidents will fly to the station and solve all the international issues. Thank you very much. I would like to say thank you to the crew for their good mood, their wonderful answers for good questions. And I would like to wish the crew to rest well, have a good meal, and have a nice time watching you, the white sun of the desert. Thank you, the crew. And Let's take pictures. I would like to take a picture of all of you. Both crews together. Both crews together. Send closer to each other. And only the prime crew, please. Евгений, отрывайтесь от коллектива. Евгений, stand closer to Oleg. Ну и как ответ на крайний вопрос, руки вместе, пожалуйста. And as the answer to the final question of the press conference, please unite your hands. Все, спасибо большое. Thank you very much.